Well, welcome to Presence is a Present, Mindfulness, Reflection, Renewal with Holly Duckworth. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we have Circle Sisters from all over the, the country. And then we also have our, uh, I see Denise is in the chat, um, a couple of OAS organization of American states so with our partnership um, in Trinidad and Tobago so welcome OAS circle sisters as well so we are here for a moment from the end of the year um, um, busy um, running around and all of that stuff and thank you all for joining us hearing you to stay on mute until breakout rooms have begun okay so at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker for today, Holly Duckworth. Holly has been called a trailblazer, mindfulness for leaders. She is the founder of the American Mindfulness Association to advance mindfulness, a key strategic business practice. As author of four books at the intersection of leadership, sales, and mindfulness, she is a sought after global keynote speaker. Look for Holly as a featured live mindfulness trainer on Insight Timer app, or as the host producer of the Everyday Mindfulness Show with more than 150 episodes. Holly is a proud graduate of Circle 62 from way back in 2022. But most importantly, she brings a bit of calm to a world of chaos. So at this time, please join me in giving a warm circle welcome to Holly Duckworth. Thank you so much, Tammy. Let's just all take a moment to arrive here. And I would invite you, if you're, you're joining in on your computer screen, feel free to close out some of those windows. Maybe take all those piles off your desk and give yourself the gift of this hour to take care of yourself so you can take care of others this holiday season. It is truly my honor to be here to give us the opportunity to explore a conversation around mindfulness and presence. Uh, we are going to record uh, the early session, and I'll let you know when we're going to stop the recording so that we have the opportunity to do some small group sharing and reflection. And no matter how you celebrate this holiday season, whether you celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas, Kwanzaa, or just simply today on the solstice, it's a powerful time to maybe give yourself a break. Take a breath in and out, feel your feet on the ground. I don't know about you, but I sort of feel like the world went from pause to fast forward as we transitioned out of 2022 into 2023. And so often when we meet each other in this state of pause and especially the hurriedness of the holidays, it's no longer is your glass half full or is your glass half empty. We're all meeting each other with the sense that our glass is overflowing with things to do, time commitments, that personal and professional to-do list. But I ask you, does it have to be that way? Does life have to be this nonstop roller coaster where you're either in the front seat screaming with delight or you're in the back seat terrified? Maybe this holiday season, you have the opportunity to mindfully take a moment for yourself. Remember that you cannot serve from a glass that's overfilled or from a glass that's empty. We have an exciting program planned for you to take a little time out to reflect on what you've accomplished this year and set a little bit of renewal in motion as we all anticipate the newness of 2024. By way of a small pathway for our time together, we'll have about 15 minutes. I'll do some experiential training if mindfulness is a new concept for you. We'll have about 10 or 15 minutes of small group connection 
And then of course, um, I'm always open for questions. And we wanna invite you to make sure you stay on, on mute until our breakouts. But if you do have a question, utilize that, that chat box that I want this to be as interactive of a Zoom as we possibly can have this holiday season. We're gonna learn what mindfulness is, do that small group sharing. And then I'd like to give you the opportunity to have a mindful meditative experience. But as we begin today, take a moment to check in with yourself. Answer this question. How are you feeling as we begin today? Again, some of you, this might be morning, it may be evening, it may be midday. It's the beauty of this global circle sisterhood. And I would invite you to utilize that chat box in one word. Let your sisters know, how are you feeling as we begin today? And I'll see if I can bring that chat box up to see those words. If not, I might invite Zoe to just read those out for me. Do you see a few words there, Zoe? Yes, we've got scattered, stressed, overwhelmed, and well. Human. Okay. Well, I love all of that. And I think that's a really great place to start with our conversation is honoring right where you are is right and perfect. And sometimes even in that scatteredness, a moment of self-reflection can be all you need to reset. So what exactly is this thing we call mindfulness? Mindfulness is often a misunderstood word. So I always like to eat the elephant right there at the beginning of the program. Sometimes mindfulness can be a little misunderstood because of these four pictures you see here on your screen. The first one is, do you have to be spiritual or religious to be mindful? And I like to let you know that mindfulness is kind of a word like Amazon. Many of us probably remember when Amazon was a forest uh, in the jungle. And now it's that place we go to online to buy things for the holidays. Mindfulness is a word kind of like that, where it used to be Buddhist, Eastern tradition, Eastern philosophy, but now as it's morphed and evolved, it really is a secular neuroscience-based practice that we can all utilize to be better entrepreneurs, professionals, and even more present in our personal life. The next question, that hourglass there, most people tell me, Holly, I don't have time to be mindful. Well, you know what they say, if you don't have time to be mindful, you probably shouldn't just do it for one minute, but you should do it for 10 because you probably need it the most. I'm gonna share with you a couple of tips today, mindfulness you can do within the confines of your day. So you don't feel like you have one more thing on your to-do list. That next picture of that the scattered brain or that busy brain, that cloud over your head. Sometimes there's a myth around mindfulness that says it has to be about clearing your mind. What I've learned teaching mindfulness for more than 15 years is mindfulness isn't about clearing your mind so much as it is that muscle that when you recognize you're scattered or you're off focus or you're maybe physically in a room, but your mind is somewhere else, that you're utilizing your mindfulness presence to bring your mind back to the present moment. That's the practice of mindfulness. And then of course that lower image there, the thumbs down. So many people come to me and they say, Holly, I don't know about this mindfulness thing because there's no research about it. And I'll admit about 10 years ago when I first started, there was maybe just 10 or 12 scientific based research studies that would come out each year on mindfulness. In 2023 alone, there was hundreds of scientific studies from some of the top research universities around the world stating that mindfulness has powerful results when we practice it. So I wanna invite you to think, is your mind full or is your mind full? And maybe take this hour to let go of the busy brain and really recenter on what it is that you want to have happen this holiday season as we step into it as well as into 2024. So what exactly is mindfulness? For some, it's something you might have read on a fancy magazine cover, but really it doesn't have to be that way. Maybe mindfulness is simply your presence and remembering 
that your presence is the greatest present you can give at any time of the year. So many media outlets have said that we need to take meditation more seriously, that research continues to show mindfulness can help you to curb pain, help you to rewire yourself to be more happy, and it actually has physical changes within your brain. It's moved from sort of this woo-woo concept to now a wow. In fact, in 2022, I partnered with the executive producer of a full-length feature film called The Mindfulness Movement Movie. And if this is a topic that you're interested in learning more about, I would encourage you to check out this movie. He interviews folks like Deepak Chopra and Jewel and other creatives who share how their mindfulness practice helps them to be the most competitive in their work choice and their work world. Mindfulness is no longer just about stacking rocks and sitting in a lotus position. In fact, my book even says, no yoga mat needed. Mindfulness has one most commonly agreed upon definition. And you see it there from the founder of modern mindfulness, John Kabat-Zinn. John Kabat-Zinn was a researcher at the University of Massachusetts Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Institute. And he built an entire program that ultimately ended up evolving mindfulness from that sitting in the yoga position to the practices that you can do to keep yourself healthy and sane, not just at the holidays, but all year long. I like to say mindfulness is the practice of being fully present in the moment. It's really about training your attention. And ladies and gentlemen, I wanna focus on two pieces of this, this focus. The one word practice. I get it, all of us on some level are recovering perfectionists. Mindfulness is a practice, not a perfect. So if you've tried it and it didn't work for you, maybe this is an opportunity for you to try it again. And of course, being fully present in the moment. We're all gonna have that moment where our brain wanders. Bring yourself back, practice, be gentle and kind to yourself. So as we come back to in-person circles and Zoom circles, however your business is showing up now and into 2024, I think it's exciting, especially in this NASDAQ program, to re recognize the power of a circle, oneness. Look at the sun, the continued light shining through all of us in our businesses. Recognizing that in circles, there is no beginning and there is no end. And that there's this opportunity for us to use our presence within that confines of the circle to always be gifting ourselves. Be here now, be here now, be here now. So as we are wrapping up our year, I want us to start with a self-connection question. How have I changed this year? And again, this can be a self-reflection question or if you feel inspired, of course, you're invited to put a short tweet in the chat box and share it with your NASDAQ circle sisters. How have you changed this year? Maybe you even just write this on a post-it note at your desk and, and keep it handy for self-reflection after the holidays. Perhaps you've become a parent. Maybe you've written a new business plan, signed a new contract. Without judgment, mindfully explore your self-connection. And if that question speaks to you, I would invite you to do that in a journaling activity. Because we have limited time today, I'll also share this question for self-connection. How has my business changed this year? And again, I wanna highlight without judgment. Some of you may be saying, you know what? I didn't make the money I thought I was gonna make this year. Be kind, be present. Don't judge yourself for the challenging experience, but how can you utilize the mindfulness, the presence to say to yourself, by yourself, for yourself, this didn't go the way I thought it would, but utilize that as a stepping stone not a setback for 2024. 
Again, mindfulness, mindful self-reflection is the practice of being fully present in the moment or in these questions without judgment. So as we explore that, that question and step into this conversation, I wanna share with you why science says mindfulness matters. Mindfulness helps us to have relevant business value by improving our concentration. It helps us have better interpersonal skills. That's why we started today with that self-reflection question. The more you can be present to yourself, you have better interpersonal skills, the better skills you'll have as you connect to others. What we find is professionals who practice mindfulness have a greater sense of empathy in a world that is consistently changing and is probably only gonna get faster in 2024. A mindful person will be able to exercise that empathy muscle, allowing them to recruit amazing customer experiences, employee experiences, and family experiences into their experience. And what we have found is mindfulness also enhances your creativity. There's nothing like the present moment to invite us to create a new product, a new service, dream up that new customer that we wanna attract into our businesses next year. Mindfulness, being present, helps us to be more calm. In a world that's whipped up and sometimes fear and doubt, anxiety, what's AI gonna do next year? How am I gonna manage my social media? Centering breath, calm disposition, ground yourself, make the next right best decision for you. It allows us to be more positive in our thought process, helps us to sometimes just feel a little bit more refreshed. And of course, experience a sense of focus. How do we say no to that which we no longer want in our life and yes to the new possibilities awaiting us? Mindfulness will help us to transform our stress and increase our confidence, which is so much the foundation of what we do as NASDAQ Circle Sisters, supporting ourselves in growing the businesses and lives of our dreams. There are many ways to practice mindfulness. There's of course that formal seated position and if that works for you, I say do it. There's also informal practices, micro practices and workplace integrated practices. Again, this isn't about having one more thing on your to-do list, but it's about stepping into how do you want to be in the doing? I'll say that again. How do you want to be in the doing? So one of the practices I would invite you to take with you this holiday season is the stop practice. We're all gonna see something like this, stop sign, stop light. You might stop on the train. Uh, if you're commuting by train, you might be stopping if you're riding your bicycle. However you're moving around in the world, you're gonna see something that's gonna say, the world is telling you to stop. There's an invitation, take a breath, observe. Look to the left, look to the right, look up, look down, proceed. Take in that moment as a gift, not a stressful experience. This stop practice, especially at the holidays, maybe that mindful moment you can have even in the busyness of whatever the holidays are bringing for you. The next one is the rain practice. Take a moment to recognize what is. Just simply allow it to be as it is. Investigate with gentle curiosity and nurture with loving presence. It's probably not a matter of if, but when. Something in the holidays goes a little differently than you think it's supposed to go. Step into that A and that I especially. It is what it is. You don't have to change it. But maybe you ask a question that invites you to investigate with gentle non-judgment and curiosity. I love that one, especially at the Thanksgiving table or the Christmas table or the Hanukkah table or however you and your family, friends gather this holiday season. I use curiosity a lot as a saving mindfulness practice. Mindfulness can be personal and at work. I always love to share this story of Brian because it 
talks about how mindfulness can be integrated into work. And maybe next year uh, as NASDAQ sisters, we'll have the opportunity to explore this a little bit more. If you're feeling disconnected, you're challenged to connect to some of your collaboration partners, maybe it's time for a cultivating compassion practice. What they have found is this increases your mind and your body connection. It raises your vagal tone. And that's one of the practices I'm gonna share with you in just a few moments. Perhaps you've heard of mindfulness, but it's your first time bringing it into your own business. I want you to know that you're not alone. There's a, many companies now that recognize the strategic advantage of mindfulness as a sales leadership success strategy. I love the story of Aetna. In fact, I said mindfulness increases creativity. You can actually look this up online. Aetna has mindfulness coloring sheets. They're scientifically proven that, you know, the smell of a crayon. Do you smell it? Brings your stress down just a little bit. Increases your, cur your curiosity and creativity. And Aetna uses this with their executives to apply mindfulness in their workplaces. Of course, there's Google, the Search Inside Yourself Institute. Uh, I've given this resource at the end of the program as well as opportunities to bring mindfulness, whether your company is large or small, into your organization's co corporate culture. What we found with my coaching client, Christina, is sometimes we have a hard time connecting to others in the organization. Maybe you practice meta-awareness, giving yourself a meditation walking meditation, a seated meditation, a creativity meditation that allows you to construct a new metal, mental model for yourself and how you fit into the world. The effects of mindfulness are vast. I like to throw it into four different buckets, really. One is your attention system. One is your resilience system, your connection and teamwork, and of course, that leadership system. And these effects of mindfulness are highly documented. And you can learn more, of course, at Mindful Leader, or I'd be happy at the American Mindfulness Association to tell you a little bit more in the new year. So if mindfulness doesn't require you to sit on, on a meditation mat, what are seven ways you can be mindful? I've put a few of them there on your screen. One is not just talking about it, but doing mindfulness. So that's why at the beginning of this webinar, this Zoominar, <laughs> I invited you to take everything off your plate and center. Examine your beliefs. We started that with that first question. Utilize your technology carefully. Are you running your technology? Is your technology running you? Set your intention. Create a vision for the new year. Movement, when you move your body, you move your mind. If you're feeling stuck right now or stressed or overwhelmed, maybe just take a mindful walk. Maybe down to get a cup of coffee or out to get those holiday cards in the mail. When you move your body, you move your mind. And then of course, that mindful practice of gratitude. So as we slip a little deeper in the holiday season, I wanna, utilize a little bit of your time this morning to actually do a mindful meditation. Taking this opportunity to actually be mindful rather than just talking about it. I want to invite us to do just that. So I'm going to start a little spa music here. I invite you to meditate with me.
kindness to yourself. Take a moment to feel into your shoulders, into your torso. Feel yourself standing or seated. Let's take a moment to wrap ourselves in loving kindness. Again, I invite you to whisper these words and let them wash over you. May I be held in loving kindness. May I be happy and safe. May I be healthy. May I always have enough. May my heart know peace. As you take a moment to fill yourself with this loving kindness, take a moment to be grateful for your willingness to take this time out for you. And as we draw this practice to a close, I invite you to wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. If you've closed your eyes, feel free to open them, but bring with you this newfound sense of calm and centeredness, recognizing that you are the greatest present you can bring to yourself this holiday season. It's not about doing mindfulness, it's about being fully present. And as we move into our small group conversation, I brought this oldie but goodie up on the screen. And no matter how you identify yourself in the NASDAQ circle as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a CEO, feel free to read through this. Insert the words that call to you, recognizing this holiday season, anything's possible. You can be focused, feel love for yourself and others. When you step into curiosity, you can contribute to things that are amazing. And it's never too late to start honoring your dreams and living into them. So I'm going to invite um, Zoe to turn off the recording now so we can keep the conversation intimate and uh, that you know that your, your, your sharing is being kept sacred and inviolate in these small groups um, and thank those who did watch the recording as we move into our small group discussion.